Yeah, I got an Amsterdam thing to commemorate the trip of complete debauchery. And it was like the funnest trip ever, but I I felt like I was going to die at the end of it. Jeff, Matt from High on Fire, thank you guys so much for your time today. I know these are busy days with Cometh the Storm is finally coming. But before we get into everything, uh, you just told me before we started that you've been doing a lot of interviews. You're a well-oiled machine. So are you like super tired right now or what's the energy level? How are you doing? Uh, well, me personally, I'm okay, except I was cleaning my house. So I, you picked a day where my allergies are fucked. <laughs> but <laughs> I'll, I'll get through it and just... My sinuses are tore up right now, so right, lots of right. lots of dust. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you that's, it's all good. <laughs> we, had a little scare. we had a power outage here for about. I'm wondering how that was going to go with all the interviews. We're back yeah, online, yeah. so all is well. Good, good. good. Oh. I mean, now let's just use that straight away as as a starting point. Like you said, like all the interviews that we're doing, and and it's true. There's a lot of buzz yet again around a new high on fire album there's a lot of people want to talk to you guys um given that the band is basically you know band is technically 25 years old which i think classifies it as classic rock at this point um you know does that sometimes even with all the experience you have like do you find time to take a step back and go like that's pretty amazing that after all these years you know people still want to line up like crazy to talk to you people want to you know find out everything about the new album and there's this buzz going on like does that ever surprise you do you take time to, to, to think about legacy and milestones like 25 years uh, absolutely um you know when it, it really dawned on me is i, I did a book with a, a during covid with a bunch of artists that i had worked with over the years and i gave them all like illustrations to do so they didn't have to do like oil paintings or something right, right. but it, 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 I, I was kind of like trying to provide jobs for everybody at the same time as me going through and i went through all my lyrics and realized how many songs we actually have it's like incredible <laughs> it's like, right. i was like oh there's like literally like 180 songs or something crazy and i was like wow and, and looking back on that it really makes you like go historically it's 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 kind of you know I, I guess that's a legacy we'll leave behind you know all the work we've done over the years is like it's cool to take a step back and look at it you know so yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's yeah i wild. mean that's my yeah <laughs> it's been also like <laughs> i mean i said when in the introduction like you know it's finally here uh now i mean for any other band nine albums in 20-ish years would be a really good productive you know output um high and fire always had like albums every two three years almost like clockwork and then now we've got a little bit of a bigger break uh for you know there's obviously some things that happen that put everybody on delay but like jeff do you feel the same that it's like it's it's time to have a new album out and and do you believe it's actually coming or is it like you know i'll believe it when i see it uh when it's actually out in a few weeks it's definitely overdue you know obviously a lot has happened in the world since our last album came out you know yes. both within the world within the band so you know we've mm -hmm. definitely had some uh, hurdles to overcome to uh get this thing to the finish line but uh and it took a lot of work but yeah it's it's pretty awesome that it's it's almost here Seeing that that there's been really good reception to what you've put out so far, um, with the hurdles that you're talking about, Jeff, you know, with obviously, you know, we had the pandemic, you had you have a new drummer on board, you had to overcome some 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 hurdles. Seeing that very good response, is that is that a weight of your shoulders? Like okay, or you know, like how 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 much do these fan reactions like you know um, impact you guys? It's definitely gratifying to see positive commentary on on the music you know it's a uh, definitely there's been a lot of anticipation and obviously mm -hmm. you know there's been quite a gap since the last album um so you know it's it, it's definitely encouraging to see uh that people are digging it so far yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 
Matt, you said in, an, in another interview a couple of years ago, I think already, but that, um, you know, when the world's in a shitty state, I write the best high and fire music. So based yeah. on what we've just been <laughs> talking about, uh, can everybody just expect that you think this is the best album you're putting out? I mean, probably. <laughs> I always think the new album's the best album I've ever written. It. Every Or Jeff's ever written. Or anybody, <laughs> you know. Um, that, uh, <laughs> I try to kill the ego or whatever, though, you know. So <laughs> that's, um, that's, a, that's a given. Like, yeah, it's because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's new, too, and I'm not used to it. And, and, um, and you know, there's the classic stuff, too, that, like, yeah. You just, I love playing Snakes Through the Vine. I'll never get sick of that song, you know? Um, mm -hmm. But when you have fresh stuff, it's like, it gives you, it gives you a, like, new light and excitement and a nervousness, you know, and, and everything that goes along with being a performer, you know? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to compare, you know, because you're, you're always trying to make your best album, right? Right. You know, <laughs> you're always just just trying to keep pushing your craft and trying to create something that's, you know, better than the last thing and, you know, interesting and exciting. And but, yeah, it's, you know, definitely having new material to play is going to be nice. So, so, Jeff, does that mean for you that once that album is out, do you go? Can you then also appreciate the new album for a while or are you? in the mindset like the moment an album is out you start looking back and going like oh this could have been this i should have done that slightly differently like is, is high and fire a band just you know you're 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 looking for the, to create the perfect album every time um it, are you able to enjoy your own music once it's out like are you or are you nitpicking and, I think and going like oh we should change this we should have done that I think that you know, for for me the nitpicking happens up until the moment it's finalized and the, okay. the master is approved and then after that i try to just like take a step back and just leave it alone for a while and then i can usually listen to it and appreciate it now uh, what we expect from high on fire is like you know uh, uh what inspires you and uh, matt and jeff you both you know you've talked a lot about stuff that you've read over the over the years and decades we always see some esoteric influences we see some sci-fi fantasy influences in this case you know with chris mcguest this is a perfect example of a song where we get that uh flavor in the album as well um people always say like oh yeah you guys are always inspired by hp lovecraft there's so much more out there i'm recently started reading clark ashton smith um oh is that's a good one that is I have like one. every paperback that guy ever did, and uh, actually Al gave it to me, but I he sent that me right all here. the paperbacks. I love Clark Action Smith. That that's a good one. That is a good <laughs> one. A good yeah, I know. I'm really digging it. Like for people that want to explore this a little bit more, like dive a little deeper, and you know, because like I said, everybody has heard of H.P. Lovecraft. A lot of people have heard of Smith, maybe, maybe not as much. What's something that um, people are interested? What can they dig into? What other writer would you recommend? Um. Well, I, I, I've been into, um, you know, like uh, the, the cuneiform texts and, and the Anunnaki and in comparisons to the biblical aspect of our creation stories. Um, and Tr uh, Trish McGist is actually like the Emerald Tablets of Thoth. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I mean, this is, this is like ancient esoteric religious stuff that's kept shrouded from us and i like to dig deep on that stuff and it, and it gives it gives me good metaphors you know I, I can metaphorically turn that into a song of about my lyrically about the times you know um, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that, that song like for example just Je jeff wrote the abundance of that song and the riffs and he had it for a while and it just sounded like that to me so yeah. i was like okay if it sounds like that i'm gonna put my my details on it and I, I just dive in you know and i'm all okay this is about this so i learned yeah. every single thing about that and every angle about it that i possibly can and try to try to display it poetically to to a hi-hat you know it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so okay. now uh you, you guys have been you know partnering for a while now uh, and jeff so like in this partnership like what is it like for you to in to stay with this example like you write a song 
and you know when you share it with matt he goes straight away that's what that is about like how is how interesting is that for you when you're creating music and somebody goes like i hear the story it's telling whether or not that has anything remotely to do with what you were first inspired by like like what's that like being in such a partnership I mean, yeah, I mean, it's great when it happens like that. If something that I present can, you know, evoke imagery and sort of a, a feeling that sort of allows a storyline to unfold, that's always great. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm typically thinking more in terms of musically, like just like trying to create moods and vibes with, right. with uh, musical contributions and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. trying to explore there. But yeah, it's great when, you know, we can kind of, play off of each other in that regard. What, what's cool about you guys, like people always kind of categorize you quickly as like, oh, there's stoner and sludge in there, but there's so much going on in your music that, you know, you kind of fit in everywhere and are your own thing at the same time. But if we focus on that, you know, stoner sludge element, um, in the last few years, there really seems to be like a renaissance for that music globally where in the past that's been like in some parts of the states some parts of europe was heavily represented but now it seems to come from everywhere and uh, bands are popping up like you know in southern italy all of a sudden are super popular now um do you see that as well i mean this is the beauty of today's world where you can easily with one click see you know where are people located there listening to your music because you know all the all the platforms will, will give you that insight do you see today or the last few years a more global response to your music than let's say 10 15 years ago i i think so because of the i mean communication has just become abundantly almost unhealthy but not not right. for the subject of a thing like music you know it's become unhealthy for like politics and bullshit but at the same time, for music, it's actually one of those uh, things where technology can be a good or bad thing. Technology right. is a good thing for music, for for sure, you know. So, um, and, and the fact that we can communicate like this globally is, is abundantly clear. It's growing, you know. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. yeah. You guys are playing Europe. You're playing uh, Grass Pop as well. I'll see you there uh, uh, in the press area if you want to hang out. Um, what can we expect from this tour? Because you already said earlier, Matt, you've got a lot of fucking songs. <laughs> and you obviously have to, you know, uh, you want to promote this new album. Um, but every person that's coming to your show is going to have a wish list of maybe not 180 songs that they want to hear, but they're going to have, you know, <laughs> some, 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 some requests, if you will. So um there's there's a lot of cool shows coming this year for high on fire what are we what can we expect um well you can expect us i i don't know whatever we choose i, I don't feel like high on fire has like a bad song i feel like there's a couple recordings that can be redone <laughs> but so whatever we bring is going to steamroll but i think there's going to be a lot of what we did on this album um being presented on stage and you know I, i'll think about the crowd and what they want but at the same time at the end of the day what we want is what's most important to us and how mm -hmm. and it's it's gonna punish no matter what so yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm you know pull up your pants get ready <laughs> Obviously, there's certain songs that everyone's going to want to hear, but yeah, right. with a catalog as large as ours has become, it's hard to fit everything in there. You know, it's hard to yeah. represent every album <laughs> at this point. <laughs> so, for sure, yeah, yeah for definitely, sure. definitely be playing a good a good selection of new material, and uh, yeah, trying to you know maybe pull some surprises out, some songs we haven't played in a while. Okay, so Jeff, if yeah. if if you had the three hour sets that that uh you know if that was a that was a reality um and you could pull out a couple of those let's call them forgotten songs like is there a song specifically stand out for you that maybe we shouldn't expect for this tour but that if you had you know unlimited time and resources that we that you would love to play oh that's a tough call there are so many um 
I think King of Days would be a really cool one to play. We've actually never played that live, so that might be an interesting one to uh, try to fit okay. into the set. Yeah, I just got to figure out how to play the 90 guitar parts me and Jeff put all over that. <laughs> yeah. But we can do it. It's just it's gonna be a, it's not gonna be that that stacked, you know, with that that's like such a heavy guitar song. It's like, oh wow. <laughs> Where do I start? Um uh yeah, um there's stuff off surrounded by thieves that I'd like to play again. Uh, but like Thraft of Canaan, the Yeti. The, there's a couple songs from the past that would be cool to reprise, but um like I said, going forward, I mean, there's a reason our business is called the uh, Batter and Slay Services. So <laughs> we're showing up to do just that, our jobs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Given that you're going for Europe, I, I wanted to ask you, Matt, because I don't, I don't think I ever knew, but don't you have a tattoo of the flag of Amsterdam on your arm? Oh, yeah. Old man Bill what, did that. What's uh, what, Fire what's the, flag. what's the story behind that one? Because I I don't know what I, uh, I, what the connection after, is. After, um, it's it's the first time we had got together in like thirteen years, and we got asked to do this concert at Butlins out in the coast in England, and it was the most money I've ever made at a show. And all my tattoo artist friends went, like all, all these people, you know, all these other bands. And um, we just partied like the, it, it. I mean, it was like a week long of just getting fucking wasted. And um, so we went to Amsterdam and rented this uh, rented this whole loft thing. And I was with, like I said, a couple of tattoo artists. And we went and saw um, old man Bill at at uh, what is it called, Pinkies or whatever, and. Uh, yeah, I got an Amsterdam thing to commemorate the trip of complete debauchery. And yeah, it was yeah. like the funnest trip ever, but I, I felt like I was going to die at the end of it. So <laughs> made it back. I'm still in one piece, but that was like 2010 or something, you know. So I, I, I was everybody was like full raging alcoholic right around then. So yeah, 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 yeah. I went with it, and that's where that tattoo came from. Well, um, let's uh, hope that this tour is so successful and so memorable that you guys come back fully covered in whatever you want uh, to, to make sure that you know that we can celebrate this tour so much. I look forward to the tour. Uh, talking about tattoos, I mean, we cannot talk about High on Fire without talking about the visual side of it. Uh, you guys, you know, just like lyrics are inspired by certain stories, it's clear which artists have inspired you over the years when it comes to you know cover art work and, and so on. Um, come after the storm, we've got a ship coming towards our way. Um, should we, how should we interpret that cover? Is it, is the ship trying to get away from the storm that's coming or is the ship actually bringing the storm towards us? Uh, <laughs> I hadn't thought about that perspective, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not sure how Eric Roper was thinking of it when he did that, but, um, I, I would say it's bringing it to you. All right just like you will bring the storm in this this summer and well starting uh, in just a few weeks or a few months i guess uh, on this european run uh guys thank you so much for your time and and answering some of the questions about the new album and the plans that you have for this year i look forward to this album being out so that all those fans can comment even more funny comments and positive comments and all the stuff you're going to be putting out and they can all go and buy those tickets to your shows thank you so much for your time i really appreciate it and i hope to see you on the road we appreciate yours, Jasper. Thank you. You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.